The term false dichotomy is defined as a logical fallacy which occurs when a limited number of options are incorrectly presented as being mutually exclusive from one another or as being the only options that exist in a situation where that isn't the case. In my personal experience, I have found no greater false dichotomy than when science and faith are pitted against each other as if only one can be true or you have to choose between one or the other. It breaks my heart when people say, I don't believe in God, I'm just a science person. Or even just, I believe in science as if science is a faith of its own. The reason I take this so personally is because other than coffee and cameras, science and faith are perhaps my two greatest loves. I received my degree from the University of Texas in aerospace engineering and spent a little bit of time working for a company that builds rockets. And not little rockets that you can launch in your backyard. No, I mean real rockets. Did you know that the camera in your phone is actually a result of research done by NASA in the 90s to be able to take pictures in space? Ask anyone that knows me, they will confirm I am a nerd. But at the same time, my personal faith is the cornerstone of my life. In fact, now I work full time as the media director here at North Point. So when it comes to faith and science, the two are addressing fundamentally different questions. Science, in practice, is meant to answer the foundational questions, what and how. Faith, in the Bible, answers the foundational questions of who and why. If you've never read the Bible, here's a spoiler, it's about God and his relationship to and will for mankind. It's about why he sent his son for us. For example, Genesis, doesn't tell us exactly how God made the universe, it tells us that he made the universe. Science is in pursuit of understanding exactly how our universe works, what laws and constants govern it, and how we fit into it. As a person of faith, I would say God created all of those things for us to discover them and for us to discover him. I myself and many scientists grow in their awe and wonder of God as they learn more about how things are made. For example, if you were to understand exactly how your phone was made, how each piece of hardware manipulates electricity and follows the steps laid out in the software to produce images on tiny pixels that you can interact with, if you were able to take it apart and put it perfectly back together again, your conclusion wouldn't be that nobody made your phone or that by chance it came from nowhere. Your conclusion would be that people the, the people who made it were able to create such a device and they must be pretty dang smart. And science gives you a fuller appreciation for their skills and creativity as you learn how much innovation goes into one device. Look, the human body alone, the eye, the brain are infinitely more complex than an iPhone. When you learn that the curve of your eye actually bends light so that the image you see is upside down by the time it reaches your retina and then your brain inverts the image back so that you can see the world right side up, you get pretty impressed with whoever or whatever made us. And don't even get me started about the beauty and complexity of space. There's one Stanford professor who says that the odds of our universe happening on accident are 1 in 10 to the 40th power. And just for perspective, there aren't even 10 to the 40 atoms in the universe. It would be kind of like putting a piece, uh, every piece of a completely disassembled watch in a shoebox, shaking it once, and then opening it to find a completely assembled and working watch inside. Or even when you realize that if the gravitational constant were even a fraction different, then the whole universe might collapse in on itself, or we would all be gas, or liquid, or maybe even just spontaneously combust. You might start to conclude that it takes more faith to think that this is all an accident and you grow more and more impressed with the really, really smart, really big iPhone maker somewhere out there in the universe. So my point for this four talk is this. If you're not a Christian, don't let science stand in the way of you becoming one. If you're an honest analytical thinker, you know that doesn't even make any sense anyways. One does not disprove the other. Keep moving. The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel is a really cool example of an investigative mind seeking to disprove Christianity through science and actually coming to quite a different conclusion. You don't have to check your brain at the door to consider faith. 
In fact, eight of the highest 10 IQs on the planet believe in a God. And if you are a Christian, don't be afraid of the science questions. We can embrace that world with open arms. And every time we make a new discovery, we get to say, oh, that's how God did it. So because I'm for you, and because I'm for the next generation, let's change the conversation from science versus faith to science and faith.